Like you don't want everybody to know that we filmed two episodes in one day and just changed clothes to make it look like this is a new day? Today it's Saturday, April 18th. In real life, the day we recorded this, Alexandria just enrolled in her fall master's degree classes. So congratulations to her. It's Animal Crackers Day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what today is? Do you know what we're making today? Burgers. Yeah, are you excited? Yep. yep. We're gonna eat so many burgers today. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done any research to prepare for this episode? I came with the dates. <laughs> I'm Alexandria, and this is Michael, and today we're making cheeseburgers. Welcome to the full measure. <laughs> I always feel like I want to do this. I'm Alexandria, this is Michael, and today we're making cheeseburgers. Welcome to the full measure. <laughs> On our show, we make a recipe two ways. One way that most people cook food at home, and then another version that's a little more effort. In the end, we let you know whether we think going the full measure is worth the effort. For our recipe today, we're gonna to be grinding our own meat, making a bun from scratch, and finishing with aged white cheddar. Should be really good. That burger goes up against normal, store-bought, regular ground beef with regular American cheese on a regular bun. Is it worth it to put that much effort into a cheeseburger? Let's find out. The full measure burger wouldn't be a full measure without making the bun from scratch. This recipe is from King Arthur and it's pretty straightforward. You start by blooming one teaspoon of active dry yeast and 200 grams of lukewarm water. Let that sit for about 10 minutes before mixing 418 grams of all purpose flour, 50 grams of sugar, one and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and one large egg in the bowl of a stand mixer. Mix until the dough is soft and smooth. Place in a lightly greased bowl, cover with a towel, and let rise for one to two hours or until it's doubled in size. I like to leave my dough in the microwave for this part. It's not on, of course, duh. Once it's doubled, remove from the bowl and place on a lightly floured work surface and divide into eight equal pieces. Shape each piece into a small ball. You can build a bit of surface tension by dragging the dough along the inside of your hand and pulling against your work surface. Place all eight pieces onto a parchment lined baking sheet and cover with greased plastic wrap. These will rise for about another hour or until they're puffy. Once the little loaves are ready, brush one tablespoon of melted butter over the buns and bake at 375 degrees for 15 to 18 minutes or until golden brown. It's a good idea to start the buns before you're ready to make your burgers because you want them to be completely cool before you cut them open. Our burger patties are made from about 60% sirloin and 40% short rib. Start by removing the rib bone from your short ribs. I'll be saving that for stock later, I ain't no fool. Slice each into long one inch strips and then cut across the grain to make one inch cubes. Both cuts of meat are getting this cube treatment and then placed on a baking sheet because they are headed to your freezer. Cutting the meat this way gives each individual piece more surface area for the cold air in your freezer to contact. This helps the meat firm up fairly quickly without freezing the outside solid. Leave this tray in your freezer for about 25 minutes until the pieces are firm but somewhat pliable. We want this firmness because we're gonna be using a food processor to grind the meat. Working in two batches, put your little meat cubes in the bowl of a food processor and pulse for 10 to 15 seconds total. The meat should start to resemble ground beef that you've used before, but just a little more crumbly. Remove the first portion, set aside, and repeat with the rest of the beef. Again, pulsing for 10 to 15 seconds total. It doesn't take very much to get this done. Remove the second batch of meat and inspect for any large pieces of gristle or fat that won't grind up. You'll definitely want to take those out of the burger because these burgers aren't cooking long enough to break any of that connective tissue down. Form the meat into four equal sized patties and season with salt. We will add pepper to these burgers, but we'll do it after it's cooked. You cook burgers at such a high temperature, the pepper just tends to burn in the pan. Before you cook the burgers, it's good to prep everything else. I'm starting here with our fry sauce or our special sauce. Mostly equal parts mayonnaise, ketchup, a little bit of mustard, some hot sauce, some black pepper, and a dash of soy sauce. That's the special sauce that I use for every burger that I make. The last bit of prep we have is to dice a medium onion and saute it over medium heat in a cast iron pan. Obviously the onions are optional, but what's a great burger without some grilled onions? The first step in cooking the burger is actually toasting the bun. Let's take a look at the crumb from the bun that we made. We'll butter each side of our bun, put it in our cast iron pan. I like to do this at a medium heat and take my time. This is a great way to get heat starting to build in your pan. You wanna add a little bit of oil and crank the heat to high. The burger should sound like this as soon as it hits the pan. You're looking to sear the outside without fully cooking the inside. The sear forms a crust on the meat, which is exactly what you're looking for. You want to preserve it by scraping with the back of your spatula so it doesn't come off from the patty. 
This patty formed a really great crust. And as soon as you get it flipped over to the other side, you immediately place your cheese on the cooked side. A nice trick to get your cheese to melt is to actually steam it. Just a little bit of water in your pan and then cover with a lid. The cheese will be perfectly melted in about 10 to 15 seconds. After removing from your pan, this is where I finally add the pepper that was missing from before. A little bit of fry sauce on each side of the bun, your grilled onions, and topped with a little bit of pickle. No need for lettuce or tomato. I feel like they both just slide around on the burger and makes it harder to eat. Let's slice the burger open and take a look at this cross section. It's cooked pretty well, very light pink in the middle. It's exactly how you would want a burger cooked. Next, we need to make our normal, regular 80-20 grocery store bought ground beef burger to go up against this completely from scratch burger. Start by toasting your bun. This bun is just a normal off the shelf, out of the bag hamburger bun. Get that sizzle on your burger. Cook for about three minutes on one side, then flip over to the other side and cook for about one more minute. You can add your pepper here, right before you add your cheese. With American cheese, it's a little bit thinner and it melts at a little bit of a lower temperature, so it'll just melt right in the pan. Pull your burger out after a minute, place a little bit of fry sauce on each side of the bun, grilled onions on the bottom bun, top with a little bit of pickle. And there you have it, a regular, normal grocery store off the shelf burger that pretty much everyone knows how to make. I do wanna take a look at the cross section of this one. Again, cooked very well, a little bit of pink right in the center. And now we have two burgers. One regular, run-of-the-mill, everyday burger, and another we made entirely from scratch. We ground our own meat, we baked the bun fresh, it's topped with some very nice aged white cheddar. The only thing left is to try them both. I invited Alexandria back to help me decide whether all of this work was worth it or not. Uh, I don't want to let them cool down too much more, so let's okay. try this really, really good one first. It's really good. It's a good burger. Like when you take a bite, I think my initial reaction is just it's really rich. Mm -hmm kind of takes over whatever other flavor is there, all that like, rich fattiness, I feel. I think it feels really high-end. It feels more like a steakhouse burger, mm -hmm. like really high-end meat. Like it tastes, it's beefy. Like it tastes more like a cut of meat than we would normally yeah. have on a cheeseburger. Like it feels very decadent. It's pretty good. Um, what do you think about the bun? The bun is nice. It's yeah. And I just like, it's very bready tasting. It's bringing more flavor than what is normally on a hamburger bun. I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I think you just want to dig into that other one. <laughs> you can eat it, yeah. Let's take a bite of this. That feels, that tastes more, like all of the components of a burger are there a little bit more equally. I'm really bummed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bummed because I know that I've watched a lot of videos and I've like, the fancy burger like never beats the, the normal burger. And I was like, you know what? I feel really good about it. I'm gonna make the bread from scratch even like not, like people don't normally even do that. And I was like, it's definitely gonna give it a run for its money, but like, it's not even close. The show is not about this recipe versus that recipe. No. So like, I think the, the normal, the regular recipe is better than the high-end, the, the full measure recipe. Um, is the full measure recipe one worth it? Like that's what we're discussing. We had to get higher priced meat, cut it up, freeze it, grind it up, and before we could even make the patties. And I had to make bread from scratch. The more effort recipe was way more fun. Like it was so much fun to make because I, I got to make bread and I got to like grind my own meat and like that stuff is fun, but it didn't make a better burger, it made a different burger. I just wish that there was like, this wasn't so overpowered by the the like richness of the meat. Fundamentally, this taste, the, the regular recipe tasted more well-rounded and the, the more effort one was just about the beef. They both have their place and honestly, I think nine times out of 10, I'm gonna cook the regular 80-20 grocery store ground beef because it's, uh, I don't know, it's its really, really good for not that much effort. Works for me. Go team. But where does it fall on our little chart? Let's take a look at how much effort this took versus the amount of payoff that we got. This is our chart of worth itness where it measures how much effort goes into a recipe versus how much payoff you get back. 
These burgers were both very, very good. The one we ground ourselves and made the bread from scratch was a great burger. But was it worth it? For me, the answer is no, pretty easily. Does that mean I won't make the complicated burger from time to time? No, it was honestly really fun to make. That's it for today. We really appreciate you watching these videos. If you don't mind throwing us a thumbs up on the bottom there, and if you can click subscribe, click the bell icon if you'd like to get a notification anytime we upload a new video. And again, thank you very much for watching. Welcome to the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> Every time in my head when you, when you do the intro, like you're doing the intro really well, but then I hear that it's a live music play because like that's how. <laughs> Your little <laughs> is bucking up. Hey Vsauce, Michael here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That's enough stupid impression. <laughs>